Yes. Okay, so I'm going to model everything we're doing up here so you can listen and you can watch. So uh, you are going to take your graham cracker, and I want you to carefully, you don't want to put too much pressure in the middle because then you'll break it into four, but you're going to break it into two pieces. So you have two tectonic plates. I want you to take your spoon, and I want you to spread your esthetosphere out a little bit. So if it's in a big clump, just you don't want it too thin, but just spread it out a little bit so it covers a little bit more room, not the entire plate, just about like that. Okay, and if you want to lick your spoon, that's fine. Don't purposely like scoop it all up and like, oh, oops, it's on my spoon. <laughs> you will get to eat this, but you know, you know how you were always told not to play with your food before you eat it? We play with our food in here. We break rules because we do what we want. Okay. Uh, once you have your asthenosphere spread out, you're going to take your lithosphere, graham crackers, and I want you to please not push them down, but just set them on your asthenosphere just like this. So you have some uh you have some asthenosphere in between the two of them. Okay, so uh, we are going to model tectonic plate boundaries. And this is where two plates meet. All right, so we have three types of boundaries. The first one we are going to do is convergent. And what did I say happens at convergent boundaries? Two plates do what? Collide. Collide. What does that mean? They come how? Together, apart, or sideways? Together. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to model this. Just a little bit of pressure, not too much, and push them together. Ew. Now you may get pudding on your fingers. That's what the paper towel is for. All right, and you can do that too. All right, so if we look here, what do we see happening in between our two tectonic plates? What do we see? <laughs> What does the pudding represent? Lava. Okay, so Matt, now if it's on the Earth's surface, what's it called? Lava. Okay, now what could be forming here? What would possibly build up and release lava onto Earth's surface? What do you think, Morgan? Lava. Okay, so we can get volcanoes. Uh, what, what if we get the land crashing into each other? We're not going to do this now, but uh, if we were to ram these graham crackers into each other and they would kind of push up, what do you think that would form, Davion? Mountains, exactly. Now, if you ever see a large mountain chain, you can be almost, you know, 99% sure that you are near a convergent tectonic plate boundary. Did you guys know that we have a large mountain chain where India meets Europe? And that mountain chain is the Himalayas. They grow every year because those plates are moving towards each other. If that continues to happen, what's going to happen to India? It's what's it going to become? No. A mountain, right? Okay, um, so again, when these two plates come into each other, some of the land can, you know, be forced into mountains and eventually you won't have any more flat land left. Um, there's one other thing I want to show you, and this is called a subduction zone. Now, this can happen at convergent boundaries, and we know that there are two types of crust. Can anybody tell me what the two types of crust are? Lene? Oceanic and Okay, so we have oceanic and continental. Can anybody tell me which one of those two types of crust is more dense? Which one is more dense, Cameron? Nope. Try again. 50-50 shot. Oceanic is more dense. And think of it this way. What sits lower, the ocean floor or the continents? The ocean floor. And we know that if it's more dense, what does it do? So that's just an easy way to remember it. So if the oceanic crust is more dense and the continental crust is less dense, when they come together, which one is going to go underneath the other one? The one that is more dense or less dense? More dense. So that would be which type of crust? The oceanic, okay? Now, at a convergent boundary, you can have three types of convergent boundaries because we have two types of crust, so we can get three combinations out of those. We can have continental, continental, same density, they'll push up and make mountains. We can have oceanic, oceanic, same density, they'll push up and make mountains. Or we can have an oceanic continental. When they come together, the oceanic will go underneath the continental, and that is what forms a subduction zone. When that happens, the oceanic plate that dives into the mantle, do you think it's going to stay solid or melt? It's going to melt. Uh, sometimes it just melts and releases back into the mantle. Other times, if it's moving rapidly, it's going to force that magma up underneath the continental plate, and then a volcano will form, sometimes very quickly. Did I tell you guys the story about the farmer in Mexico? Yeah. In here? That can happen. Okay, so you could have a volcano spring up over a matter of days, months, years, uh, but still, you know, in the scape of things, normally it takes many, many, many centuries for mountains to form. 
If it happens quickly like that, you might be near a subduction zone. Okay, what I want you guys to do next, we're going to do our next type of boundary. This is a divergent boundary. And what happens at a divergent boundary, everybody? The plates do what? Divide. Divide. So they're moving towards each other or away from each other? Away. I don't know why I just forgot how to spell divide. I was like, uh, I think it's because I'm on camera. I get nervous. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to push down on our plates and we're going to move them apart. We're going to divide. Whoa. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> now when you look at this, Uh, when you look at this, I want you to notice something. If you put enough pressure on it, do you have sort of like a ridge that formed between where you push them apart? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now these are like small mountain chains. So ridges form at divergent boundaries. They're not as large as the mountains that would form from a convergent boundary, but it's still pushed up just a little bit because the plates are sinking down and pulling apart. Now, this happens on the ocean floor. Right here, where it opens up, you have lava on the Earth's surface, and especially if it's underwater, it's going to hit that water, cool and harden, and form new crust. So the newest crust that you would find would be in the middle, near the divergent boundary or near the ridge, and the older crust would be pushed to the side. So if these were two continents, let me just do this again. Let's say this is Pangaea. We have a divergent boundary here. They're moving apart, and new crust is forming. Could this help prove Wegener's idea of continental drift? Okay, but seafloor spreading, unfortunately, was not discovered until after Wegener died. So this did help, besides the uh, discovery of convection currents in the mantle, this also helped to prove his theory, because remember that one thing he was missing was, hey, how do the continents move? Uh, convection currents and seafloor spreading helped to prove that. This does happen most often on the ocean floor. We have what's called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in the middle of which ocean, do you think? The Atlantic. And we have new crust continuously forming there. Uh, there are other things that help prove it. When we look at the rocks on the ocean floor, they have actually, the uh, magnetic minerals in them are lined different ways. So you'll see like a band of rocks that are lined up one way and then a band that are lined up the other way. And that has showed us that uh, uh, Earth's magnetic field, uh, the poles, have reversed several times over the course of Earth's history. Because whenever this lava comes up and cools and hardens, if it has iron in it, those iron pieces and elements are going to align themselves with the magnetic poles, but once they cool and harden, they are frozen in time. So if we look and we see them aligned one way here and a different way here, and then one way here and a different way here, and it matches up on the other side, that also helps prove that this new crust is forming here and then pushing apart the continents. Okay, so again, this is divergent. You'll find ridges here. And this process is known as C floor spreading. Have you guys heard of that before? Okay, so seafloor spreading happens at divergent boundaries and also helps to prove the idea of continental drift. Okay, class. Yes. Now we are going to make a transform boundary. So I want you to pick up your lithospheric plates and you're going to put them right next to each other again. Okay, I know you're going to get a little bit of pudding on your hands. It's okay. Okay, we're going to do a transform boundary out now. How many of you guys, I heard some people saying that their plates broke? Yeah, not plates. Maybe? Not the plate. No, I mean the tectonic plates. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay. Um, this brings us to actually something that we're going to talk about with the transform boundary. Um, actually, any boundary. You're going to have a crack in the Earth's crust where you have a tectonic plate boundary, right? Okay, this crack or break in the Earth's crust is called a fault. So fault equals break. And an easy way to remember this, if something breaks, is it always somebody's fault? Usually, who broke it? It's your fault. It's your fault. No. Okay, so if something breaks, it's usually somebody's fault. That's just an easy way to remember what a fault is. Most of the time, you're going to see faults that transform boundaries. Have any of you guys ever heard of the San Andreas Fault? Not just because of Grand Theft Auto. Okay? The San Andreas Fault is in California, so it's on the west coast of North America. North America is not all on the same tectonic plate. Most of us are on the North American plate, but California, part of it, is on the Pacific plate. And we have a transform boundary here. So what did we say happens at a transform boundary? The plates do what? They slide. 
So we are going to make our plates slide. Okay? And they can slide up or down, you don't know, but either way they can slide. Okay, now if you push hard enough, do you feel how they kind of catch on each other? Yeah. Do you think the tectonic plates are nice and smooth around the edges? No. no, they're very jagged. And so if they're moving and they catch because there's a jagged rock sticking out or there's a piece kind of like if you were to take your hands and go like this, and I'll, I'll do that here. If you were to take your hands and go like this and they were to catch, they would keep moving and all of a sudden they would release. And that sudden release uh, releases energy in the form of seismic waves, which would cause a what? Earthquake. You are going to find earthquakes most often at transform boundaries. Okay? Now, we have earthquakes whenever plates collide or slide past each other and cause seismic waves to be released. So which other boundary do you think would cause earthquakes, divergent or convergent? Convergent, why? Okay, so that could release energy in the form of seismic waves. All right, so let's try it one more time. Show me convergent. What do the plates do? Okay, show me divergent. What do the plates do? Show me transform. What do the plates do? Very good. You have just passed tectonic plates 101. You are free to eat. Oh, my God. When you are done eating, please throw away your supplies in either the back or the front garbage can. If it's overflowing, let me know. Save you on.